In this video for Computer Science 9618A level, we take a look at another paper four question, this time focusing on a recursive question. Let's go ahead and walk through it together so you get as many points as you can and pass that paper four exam. So it tells us to study the following pseudocode for a recursive function. They call their function unknown. They have x, y, which are gonna be integers. Those are the parameters. And then it's gonna return an integer. So we have some things that are gonna happen if x is less than y. We have something else if x is equal to y. And then this else statement down here, that is for if y is greater than x. When I look at this, I see this return unknown x plus one y multiplied by two. This is what makes the function recursive. What is a recursive function? It's a function that calls itself. I'm in the unknown function, that's what it's called, unknown, and then inside this function, I'm calling the unknown function again. A recursive function is an alternative to a loop. When I look further down the page, I see another return statement that also lets me know this is recursive. This time, instead of x plus one being one of the parameters passed, it's gonna be x minus one. Instead of multiplying by two, we're gonna be dividing by two. Now, with this div two, we need to pay close attention to it because it means something specific. And Cambridge on the exam tells us what it means. It says the operator div returns the integer value after division. 13 div two would give six. This is not rounding up or down. It is simply dropping off the decimal. Now, if you're coding in VB, like I'm gonna be doing here in a moment, we're gonna be flipping the division sign around that we usually use. That way we can perform integer division, which means the decimal is gonna be dropped. If you are coding in Java or Python, you're gonna use the division symbol you always use. Let's go ahead and flip over and code this out. So now we can code out our function. We're gonna use the pseudocode they gave us. They called their function unknown. We're gonna call ours unknown. They used X and Y. We're gonna use X and Y. And of course this function returns an integer. So let's go ahead and let's code this out. So if X is less than Y, then all they want us to do is output X plus Y. That's all they want us to do. That's easy enough. But then we do something interesting. We call unknown again. It, we are inside the function unknown. It calls itself. You'll see this red line. Uh, the, the first reason it's red is because I spelled it wrong. Uh, if I just put parentheses, it's going to mark red because I got to pass x, y. So they want us to increment x by one. They want us to pass y. And then what they want us to do is they want us to multiply it by two. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna multiply it by two. Now there's another possibility, and that's if x is equal to y. If x is equal to y, we have reached what's called our base case. This allows us to exit the recursive function. Just like a loop needs an exit condition, so does a recursive statement. It also needs an exit condition, and we call that the base case. And this is when the function does not call itself. So that is x equals y, that's gonna return one. There's one other possibility, and that's where x is greater than y. And because that's the only other possibility, we just use else. Now, when x is greater than y, it wants us to go ahead and output again, x plus y. And then what it wants us to do is it wants us to return unknown, it wants us to call unknown again, but this time it wants us to do x minus one. We're gonna pass y, nothing happens to y. And this time, instead of multiplying by two, we're gonna divide by two. Now, if you're using vb.net, notice this division sign is backwards from what we usually use. And that is because that will perform integer division. Once again, if you're in Java or Python, use the division sign you normally use, and it will do an integer division normally. Let's go ahead and take a look at part B to get even more questions on this paper four part. And with part A done, it's time to move on to part B. So the main program needs to run all three of the following function calls and I'll put the result of each call. Unknown, 10, 15. So X is gonna be 10, Y is gonna be 15. This is to check the X is less than Y condition. Unknown, 10, X is 10, Y is 10. That's to check the X equals Y condition. And then unknown, X is 15, Y is 10. This is to check the last else condition where X 
is greater than y. Now it says for each of the three function calls, the main program needs to I'll put the value of those two parameters. We can do that very, very easily. Call the function with those parameters. We can do that too. I'll put the return value. Easy, we can do that, no problem. We can pick up a three easy points. Let's switch over to our code and code that out now. So we're gonna head into our main method or our sub main for this part. This is where we're actually gonna do everything it just told us to do. So it said it wants us to output the parameters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna output 10 and 15 because those are the values of the parameters and we just picked up points for that. The next part it wants us to do is actually uh, call the function. So we're gonna call it and at the same time, we're also gonna do uh, something else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do unknown and we're gonna pass the values 10 and 15. Now, here's what's important. It wants us to call the function which is that's what this is doing right here. And it wants us to output the return value of that function, which is handled by the same line. We're gonna do it again for the other values uh, they told us. The second uh, one was uh, 10 and 10. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the function and we're gonna output the result of that function. So we call unknown, we put 10, 10, and then all we're gonna do is do the last one. And the last one they told us to do was 15 and 10. So just easily, easily putting it out. And then I'm gonna call that function. Then after we call the function, we're going to um, output uh, the result. So I'm gonna do unknown, and then I'm gonna pass down uh, 15 and 10. Double check my numbers, make sure they match up. It looks good. Let's go ahead and run this now so we can make sure that it actually works. B part two, take a screenshot to show the output from part B one, which is what we just coded. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it so we can get the points for that and show them that we know what we're doing with our code. So now that we've read the question, we can now run our code. We need to know what are they looking for? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run our code here. And we can see here, we have an output. So 10 and 15, we have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 32. 10 and 10 gives us the expected output of one. 15 and 10, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, zero. But are these numbers correct? Well, we're gonna trace through the recursion and make sure they are correct in the numbers they are looking for. Let's go ahead and trace through it now. So we're gonna look at our code here and we're gonna trace it out. So the first thing that was called was unknown 10, 15. That means X is 10 and that means Y is 15. So we know that. Now, is X less than Y? Yes, it is. So we console.write line X plus Y. That gives us 25 in our output. Then it says, okay, return unknown X plus one Y times two. So what does the call to unknown 10, 15 what does it equal? Well, it equals unknown 1115 times two. Well, we don't know what that is. Neither does the computer. So it stops right here at this return statement or after it analyzes the return statement and says, okay, I'm gonna handle unknown 1115 times two now and solve it for you. So that is the next call. So we have a recursive call back to our function unknown. This time, 10, or x is 11 and y is still 15. So what is the result of that or what happens? Well, x is less than y, 11 is less than 15. So it wants us to output 11 plus 15. That's how we get the 26. And then we're gonna call unknown x plus one y times two. So now the computer's making a call to unknown 12, 11 plus one, 15 times two. It doesn't know what the answer to that is, so it's gonna go ahead and handle the call to unknown 1215. So X is 12, Y is 15. We look at this first one, is if X is less than Y? It is, 12 is less than 15. So what do we do? Console.write line X plus Y, that gives us the output of 27, and then it wants us to call the unknown by incrementing X by one. So now we're calling unknown 1315 times two. The computer says, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. X is 13, Y is 15. If X is less than Y, 13 is less than 15. So what do we do? We output X plus Y, that is 28. 
13 plus 15 is 28. Then it wants us to call unknown 14, 15 times two. The computer says, well, I don't know what that is. I have to figure it out. So it does unknown 14, 15. X is 14, Y is 15. X is less than Y, so we run this first part of the if statement. We output X plus Y, that is 29. Then we make another call to unknown, this time 15, 15 times two. The computer says, I don't know what that is. So now it makes the call to 15, 15. So X is 15, Y is 15. This is our base case. If X is equal to Y, then we return one. That is the result. Now that we know what 15, 15 equals, we can unwind and trace it back to figure out what the original call was. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first part, once we unwind, is it's no longer unknown 15, 15 times two, because we know what 15, 15 is. It's equal to one. So we do one times two, that equals two. So we know two is the value of 14, 15, which allows us to answer this next part. What is the value of unknown 14, 15? That is two. So we do two times two, and that equals four. So we know four is the value of 13, 15. So now we're gonna replace this unknown 13, 15 with the value of four, four times two is eight. We can now replace the value of 12, 15 times two with the value of eight times two, which is 16. Then we have unknown 11, 15 times two. Well, unknown 11, 15 is equal to 16. So we get rid of that and we replace that with 16 times two, which is 32, and then wants us to output what the call was, and the output after 29 gives us that 32. The numbers that we have are indeed working, and this proves that our numbers are working. Let's take a look at the last part, part C and D together. Rewrite the function unknown as an iterative function, iterative unknown. An iteration is a fancy way of saying a loop. So they don't want us to use a recursive function. They want us to use a loop. So we'll do that and they're gonna give us seven points for doing that. So easy, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Then the iterative function needs to be called three times with the same parameters. So what we're gonna to do to make sure it works is we're gonna call that loop or that iterative unknown function three times. We should get the same uh, results. Then they want us to copy and paste it into the evidence document the screenshot into the evidence document. And with that, we can pick up the last nine points of question one on the paper four exam. Let's swing over and let's code that out one part at a time. So here we have our function, which is gonna use an iteration, which is a loop iterative unknown. We have X and Y again as the integer, the same thing we have in our recursive statement. Of course, because it's a function, it's gonna return an integer. And the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna then value as an integer, and I'm gonna set it equal to one. We are going to return the value based on what we have here because this is gonna keep running until it exits. Now you may be saying, how am I supposed to know when it exits? Well, when we look at a recursive function, what is our base case? And that is right here x equals y. When x equals y, we should exit our loop. So what we're going to do is, is we're actually going to have this loop. So I'm going to do while x is not equal to y. This is going to keep running. I'm going to have it do a bunch of things. The first thing I'm going to, well, not a bunch of things. I'm going to have it do the same thing the function did. I'm going to output x plus y. That's what it wants me to do is it wants me to output x plus y. Then we're gonna check those same conditions. We're gonna check to see if x is less than y. If x is less than y, then what I need to do is, is I need to increment the value of x, y stays the same, and then my value, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna multiply that by value times two. That will allow me to get the same as what I'm getting here. This acts right here as calling the recursive statement. But what I want it to do is keep looping and keeping track of the value. Now that's one possibility. The other possibility is, now we don't have to code for x equals y return one because this is gonna keep looping while x is not, uh, while well, x is not equal to y. So all we gotta do is check the last one. And for that, we're gonna decrement x by one, y stays the same. And then this time for the value, 
I'm going to divide value by 2, which is the same thing as the recursive statement. That's going to end the while. Then all I'm going to do is return the value, and this will give me the same thing. I don't need to code for all three possibilities. I'm coding for these two right here inside my loop because x is not equal to y. When x is not equal to y, x must be either less than y or x must be greater than y. Then when they are equal, what are we returning? We're returning the value of one. That will allow us to do the same thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head up into our submain and we're gonna code out that part which actually calls this new function that we just wrote. All right, so finishing up the last question, they want us to output the value of the parameters and that's what we've done here. But what we also need to output is we need to call the iterative function and have it return the value. And we want they want us to output that. So that's fine, we're gonna do that. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna call our function and we're gonna pass those first two parameters where x is 10, y is 15. Then we're gonna do it again and check the condition for 10 and 10. So I'm gonna call my uh, function and I'm gonna pass 10 for x, 10 for y, and then I'm gonna do it one more time, and if this works, and it should work, um, we should get the same values that we did for the recursive function. So 15, 10, I'm gonna double check my numbers. 10, 15, yep, it looks good, so I'm gonna save it, and this time I'm going to uh, run it, and let's check our code. 10 and 15 are our output. 10 and 15, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 32, identical to what we got last time. Here's where x and y are the same. That returns the value of one. Here's 15 and 10, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, and zero. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.